Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight with me, Pod Gaming. Last week we worked on the campsite area. So this was based on a very traditional UK style holiday park with camp in areas and also the static homes. And some very nice comments as well, so thank you very much for those. I know a lot of you sort of reminisce from this as well, such as I did, um, remembering these types of holidays when I was younger. Always very exciting and always like a little adventure I found when I was um, when I was younger. A little bit different when you go there now, but still very exciting. But anyway, in this episode, we're going to be working on something completely different. We have done something like this in the past, but nowhere near this sort of level and obviously the the detailing side of things and the use of um, procedural objects is going to make this really really something special. So we're going to be working on a very unique area of the island whereby there is a fort and when I say fort I'm not talking about the sea fort that we did before although that's what I was referencing earlier. This is a land based fort and one with a dry moat around it. So on camera now you can see that we are firstly creating this dry moat and we're using the keys here and this one here was absolutely perfect for the job because it has some beautiful detail levels. I think these are the Japanese pack maybe by Ronix, I forget unfortunately. Um, but they are very well detailed already, they've got the sort of grassy areas at the bottom and it just works so well. Now the issue I had was creating the actual look of this fort so with the mechanics of the game it's quite difficult to raise terrain whilst you've created something such as this key around it the uh, mechanics of the game won't allow that so we're using these slope grass verges from the workshop and these are beautiful pieces there's a number of different sort of varieties in terms of the scale of these we're going with the um, one by four I think um, versions and because they're networkable you can basically move them around with the nodes or the networks and get these down perfectly so this really was a game changer and this is the probably the only reason why I ventured into this um, because without that it would have been so difficult to replicate and you'll see what I mean a bit later on when we start working on the actual buildings themselves and um, now we're just basically adding the wall around the key. The, the key itself is beautiful, don't get me wrong, but the, the wall color um, on this particular area um, is a little bit more orangey. So I thought I'd just put this wall around it. So we've got two different variances then, so it sort of adds to it a little bit. Now whilst I place this down on camera, I wanna let you guys know that I will be attending the PDXCon 2019 this coming weekend. I'll be on the City Skylines booth for the majority of the time. And if you're there, by all means, pop by. There's gonna be a good number of us there, all content creators. So, so make sure you do that. Let me know in the comments section below if you are attending and I'll make sure that I can somehow say hello to you if you want to. Um, but yeah, a huge, huge shout out to um, Paradox who arranged this and very kindly invited me um, to the event. So I'm really excited. There's going to be a lot of people there. I mean, there's not many people I have met personally in the community. A lot of people I've spoke to <laughs> chat wise. So I'm really excited to meet people face to face. And uh, yeah, we're going to be showing off some of our builds as well throughout the day. So by all means, like I say, pop by and say hello. Also, I know a few of you have been asking about the state of play for Project Monaco. Just to let you know, I loaded it up the other day and there was a few issues with it based on new updates of mods and items being removed from the workshop. So I did spend a few hours the other day just trying to get it back into a better state of play. But we are going to be moving back onto Monaco. Um, as you watch this video, like I said, I oh, will be in Berlin, so this video will be pre-scheduled to be released. Um, and once I'm back, I should have a bit more time to work on some Monaco stuff. I have looked into it and I do know what we're going to be building on next, but um, we'll save that for when that video is live. Anyway, back to this video. And we're now using PO to create a, um enhancement of this wall. So I wanted to keep the same colours. Um, the same textures of the wall itself, so I pretty much just used PO to change the the size and the dimension of the wall to make it look more realistic. And now we're using the grass, ploppable grass, um, alongside PO to um, adjust it and make it look a bit more respectable. 
Now, you'll notice now that the new um, version of PO has been released, which, um, sorry, not PO, the, well, the new PO version has been released, but also Move It has been updated to be used alongside um, procedure objects. You can now use Move It to adjust and change and pick things up, which um, I did prior to this video, and this video was before that was released. So check that out if you haven't had chance to do so. It could be a good excuse to move on to PO. Um, a lot of new stuff has been released from procedure objects and the latest update. There is ways to now edit undo, which I know is one thing that a lot of people was not so keen to get into because you had to have that precise ability to not get things wrong because otherwise you you know you've lost out on all that effort and time so now you can edit undo which is brilliant um so yeah check that out highly recommend it and uh have a play with the po with the uh, move it settings as well the new update to be able to move po i think that's going to be a another useful thing for us so what we're doing now is I had a bit of trouble at first trying to get the right um, dimensions of the, the grass on the top of this verge. The issue I had was because of the way the network of these of the network grass was, um, it did overlap the key at some point. So I had to kind of move the wall in um, a little bit more and make sure the diameter around the outskirts was the same. So we didn't have any clipping or anything looking sort of silly and ugly. Um, as you can see, once we're now placing down the top part of the grass verge, things are starting to take shape. It doesn't, it, it's hard to see, I'll be honest, when you don't have these walls in because it's all grass, it all looks the same colour, you can't really see what's going on. But now we've put the grass on top and we've got the wall for the inner part of the, um, the main fort. It looks more respectable, it looks, what it's, looks more like what it's meant to, which is um, always good when things start to come together. Um, so just placing these bits down, this did take a little bit of time to get right, um, but it gave a really nice outline and um, again, going with PO here, I wanted to try and clip a building in because these walls aren't just walls. And what I mean by that is there's buildings inside this segment, so where these walls are and where the grass verge is is where everyone used to live, used to do their business, etc. So I wanted to recreate that. Um, and I'll, I'll put a picture up on the screen now to give you an idea on what we are doing because it is a recreation of an actual part of the island. This fort is as it is in real life and um, I think the, the match at the end was as best as I could have got with the, you know, the parameters of the game. One thing that was quite difficult with this is adding in these little um, sort of, not peak holes, but they're basically the, the higher levels of the fort that sort of pop out the top of the grass. Um, ideally, they should be facing the other way because everything is into the center. Obviously, a fort wouldn't have its entrance facing outwards towards where the enemy could be, but I couldn't really do that. Um, it didn't look right. Uh, you'll see here, I was trying to do it um, for this particular segment it just didn't look right um, but I wanted to add something in there so I kept the other ones facing outwards to sort of still show off that look that the fort itself has a number of tiers within it and the sort of building area is um, all under this this sort of grass verge so that did take a bit of time and again the use of PO was the only way of doing it I couldn't have done it any other way um, and it was a bit tricky, as you can see here, to get some of the, the grass verges to match up. Um, sometimes it was a bit of a struggle, but we got there in the end. Um, I also wanted to add a fence around the top area as well to sort of make it feel secluded. And, you know, there could be people who could have walked along the top areas as well. So we just plopped this in and luckily because it is a network based um, item, it was a lot easier to drop in here. And we just basically buried the rest underneath the, um, the the fake grass area so that all works nicely and it just gives a lot more well it gives a better feel for the area i think um makes it look a bit more realistic and gives you the sense that people could have been walking along the top areas of this uh, this fort as well and i'm glad i found those fences because believe it or not putting these next to each other with this cattle grid on top actually makes for a really really good looking fence um and walkway um, and together I thought I'll just leave those as they are. Not perfect, but I thought they looked quite nice. 
And what we're doing here now is we're adding in one of the other buildings and using the same sort of technique as before. But this time we use PO to basically move out some of the windows and doors from another asset, one of the ones by Mac Welshman. So all I did on here, I didn't show it on camera because it was a little bit of a fiddly job, is we just used PO, found one of the, um, the doors and windows and pretty much just cut it out. Um, the way that the building was um, created by Mac made things a lot easier for me to do that. Um, and I basically just popped them out and um, as you saw we just hid the rest behind the rest of the wall. So that was that and I think that gives a better look to the area now. You kind of It kind of feels a bit more like it's lived in and not just a, a fortified wall around the whole thing. So that was good. Next job is I wanted to make it look like it's not in use anymore. So I wanted to make the area look a little bit run down by adding in some of these grass features. And I did actually do this live on, um, on YouTube, I think. I think I streamed this live. Um, and one of the points I was getting across is it's sometimes hard to know when to stop detailing grass areas. I can stop quite easily on other aspects, but when it comes to grass, sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. <laughs> and what I mean by that is some of these grass textures are absolutely sensational. And you just want to use a lot of them together. And when you zoom in, they just look so, so good. And yeah I, I just really enjoy adding in these sort of features and you'll see now we use the typical technique of pulling down some decals and lowering them down using the page down button to give off a unique sort of look um, and we also added down some leaves I think a bit later on as well but whilst we do this I'm going to leave you with some music and we'll catch up very shortly So we are now nearing the end of this episode. As you see, previously to this, we pretty much just added in grass bits all over the place. The Obviously the downside we had to these network um, parts is I couldn't add the trees above ground level. I don't use tree snapping um, due to issues with other mods. Um, but we did also add down this little car park area here um, with a bit more of the trees and bush areas just to really enhance the area. And like I said, I didn't want to go too crazy with some of the grass areas. I kind of like to detail certain areas that you may use, perhaps more so as a focal point, um, rather than putting down this the whole way through. If I could, and if my computer in the game allowed it, I would probably cover the whole map with some of this grass because they look so good. Especially this one, I think this is the one by uh, Ronix, the tall grass, I believe it's called. And it just looked perfect for this area. It looks a little bit weedy, a little bit you know, overgrown and disused and dis um, maintained, but it's perfect for this area, it really, really is. Um, so we just place a few bits down here. 
And that pretty much finishes off this episode. So like I said, if you are happening to pass Berlin or you've already got your tickets for PDXCon, let me know in the comment section below and I can certainly give you a hello when I'm there. Other than that guys, stay tuned for next week. We're working on another very interesting location. And like I say, Monaco is slowly on its way back. Thanks for watching guys and all the best.